Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob, and welcome back to episode number 75 of the Houston Astros franchise here on MLB Show 20. Today we pick up after the All-Star break with our first two series, as we start off in New York. It will be a complete showdown facing the New York Mets. So I'm going to make sure you leave a like and subscribe down below, especially in the whole franchise. Mets got a couple of interesting pieces in their line, including the newest acquisition they offer. in the All-Star game a couple episodes ago. Start off against Altuve, and he can't catch up to the 100-mile-an-hour heater. He will sit down to start the day. Next up, Michael Brantley. 3-2 to Brantley. He can't catch up to the sinker, and that's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Syndergaard to start his day. Now, Alex Bregman, 0-1 to him. He doesn't strike out, but he grounds it to the second baseman's scope, who throws him to first, and that's an easy 1-2-3 for Syndergaard. Opposing him on the mound will be Justin Verlander, who some people might have thought got snubbed from the All-Star game. However, his ERA has risen recently. He's up to 289, 122 strikeouts, though, and 121 innings is pretty impressive. He'll start off his day against Ahmed Rosario 0-2, and he strikes out on the 12-6. So that's another strikeout to Verlander's resume. Next batter, Josh Tobias. He's going to hit this one into left field. That'll be a base hit in left field, so a runner on board for New York. Going to bring up Michael Conforto, and he launches this one deep right field. We saw this plenty in Truist Park. That ball is gone into the second deck. Two-run shot for Michael Conforto. His 27th of the season, and he still thinks he's in the home run derby. That's a two-run lead now for New York to open up the first inning, and they're on the board first at their home park because it's 2 nothing Mets. Next better at the dish, 3-2 to Scope. He will walk on the outside fastball that can't hit the zone. 96 misses. Puts a runner on first. Still one out. Next batter, Davis. And he lines it to Altuve, but he's playing the double play. He can't get to it. So that's another base hit for New York. They continue to get on base. Next, Wilson Ramos. He pops up to right field and won't test the arm as that is out number two. Next batter up is Cespedes, and you know what, Cespedes will line this one into right center, that's going to be a base hit, and that'll be another run for New York, they jump out to a 3-0 lead here at home, still in the first inning, next up is Patrick Mazika, and he will line this one into right center, and he has his first career base hit in his a debut, and he will bring in run number four, as Patrick Mazika, first major league hit, first major league RBI, good start to his career he'll definitely want to save that baseball one two now blooper into left field is going to be caught and finally the Mets get or the Astros excuse me get out of the first it's four nothing but we're going to go to the bottom of the second first batter lines out to right field for out number one next Tobias at the plate three one to him he will walk on the low fastball so once again Tobias reaches first base next up Comforto, 3-1. He's walking low as well. So back-to-back -back walks for Verlander. Having a rough start to his day. Next up, Jonathan Scope, and he hits it down the line. That's a base hit. Tobias, he's going to round third base. He's going to head home. And Scope has an RBI double. It's now 5-0 New York Mets. Still only in the bottom of the second. And only one out. Davis now. Liner at Bell. That one's caught for out number two. Next batter, Ramos. Ramos hits it to right center. Springer ranges over and barely gets a glove on that one. Probably saved another two. However, it's still 5 nothing. Now bottom three, Cespedes leads us off, and he bloops it into shallow center. Springer, once again, though, will make the catch just like he did to end the bottom of the second. Patrick Mazika back at the plate. 0-1 oh, to him, and he hits it to left center. This one is out of here, and Patrick Mazika records his first major league home run that ball bounced back into the ballpark so i'm assuming he's going to want to save that one as well what a debut for the new york mets first base prospect patrick mazika is off to a hot start here in the majors 
Six nothing now for the Mets. Still in the bottom of the third. Only one out. Thankfully, Syndergaard is up next. He will align to Bell for out number two. But that's going to take us to the top of the order. Ahmed Rosario. 0 oh, 2 to him, and he strikes out on the 12 6. But it's now 6 to nothing Mets. Now, Alex Bregman to lead off for the Astros. Does he have? Do the Astros have any sort of answer here to the Mets onslaught? Well, first batter Bregman, he will draw the walk. Sinker misses down in a way. Next up, Alvarez. 1 2. He can't catch up. 99 sinker. That's another strikeout for Syndergaard. Now Josh Bell up, full count to him. He hits this one to the shortstop, 6-4-3 double play. No offense for Houston in this one as we're going to go bottom four now. Tobias leading off, and he will have another base hit. He's two for due on the day as well with a walk. And once again, the Mets have a base runner. Next batter, Michael Conforto. This one's hit deep left center. It's got some carry, and this one is going to be over the wall. Another home run for the Mets. Another home run to that spot, and another home run for Michael Conforto. His second of the day is a two-run shot, number 28 on the season. Yeah, tell that man he's back out of the home run derby, please. As it's 8-0 Mets, that'll do it for Verlander. A horrendous start to his second half of the season as Urania will come in and be tasked with closing out the rest of this inning and now two outs in the bottom of the fourth he will do just that gets Juan Ramos to strike out but this one's officially a blowout so we might go a little bit faster through this one at Springer though gets a high fastball and drills this one to the left center off of the wall so a little bit of a double to start off the top of the fifth for Houston now Springer's at third base. Stubbs with one out will dribble this one to Scope, but he will be thrown out. But that is the first run of the day for Houston. Now 8-1. Later in the inning, Brantley, though, nothing else will come aboard of this one. So they get one in the top of the fifth. Now top six, Bell at the plate with two outs. And he's going to hit a solo shot to center field. So another run for Houston. Bell his 26th home run of the season. So the Astros trying to add a little bit of offense, but I do believe it is too little too late. Syndergaard is still in this one, by the way. Uh, I don't think he would go much longer. As that was pitch number 98, and it's an 8-2 Mets lead now. Bottom of the six now, Devinsky in the ball game, and he's going to give up another home run. Guess who? Yes, it is Michael Conforto, solo shot to center field. His third of the day, 29th of the season. And Michael Conforto, have yourself a day. You just got to believe, yes, indeed you do. If you're a Mets fan, you're going to believe. You're going to have yourself a victory more than likely. 9-2 now in the bottom of the six. And another shot, this time to right center. And guess what? It's over the wall into the stands. Another home run, this time for Davis. Back-to-back -back jacks for the Mets. As it's 10-2 now as the Mets continue their onslaught. And that's actually going to do it for most of this one. We're just going to simulate to the end. Mets do get the victory, uh, if you didn't believe it or not. Syndergaard does get your win. Final score in this one was 13-6. to The Astros had a couple of runs in the 8th and 9th. Canada did have a two-run shot. But the Mets also had a two-run shot in the bottom of the 8th. Player of the game is obviously going to be Michael Conforto. 4-4, four four, four, 3 homers, 5 RBIs. He almost outscored our whole team by himself. As Verlander struggled, as well as some of the members of the bullpen. And our pitching continues to give us struggles. Now, before the in the All-Star break, there were some trades going on. And there were some big ones, especially in the division. But first, we're going to start off with an AL East trade. The Red Sox acquired catcher Reese McGuire from the Blue Jays. A nice catcher prospect. Not that they really need another one, I don't think. But Blue Jays are trading Reese McGuire away to a division rival. and But... In the more shocking news, Shohei Otani has been traded to the San Diego Padres. Now, as the general manager of the Houston Astros, this one is ecstatic. He is now in the National League. We don't got to play Otani. He was struggling a little bit pitching-wise, but still an amazing bat. So I guess the Angels are trying to build for the future. They do get a blue chipper in Mackenzie Gore, 21-year-old lefty born in North Carolina. He has a solid future. Hasn't really played well at the majors yet but I don't doubt he will make be a bust 
Also, Jerickson Profar is coming back to the AL West. He's already played for the Rangers and the Athletics. Well, now he's going to be on the Los Angeles Angels as he comes over. And our Oakland Athletics also made a trade with the San Diego Padres. They trade their leadoff man, Ramon Laureano, Laureano, a bright center fielder who we've seen plenty this year and has given us fits to San Diego as well. They do acquire Tommy Pham, though, who could be an upgrade in the hitting department. Not as good defensively, but he is another nice contact hitter as Oakland Athletics try to make a run at us late in the season. So I think this is more of a win now trade for Oakland, which usually isn't like them, but they are trying to catch us in the West. They also get a nice reliever in Jose Castillo, a lefty who has been dominant in his 30 appearances with a 159 ERA. Also get another trade after we send the day. A couple of prospects being traded between the Rays and the Rangers, so we don't really highlight that one. But in game two, we do beat the Mets 7-1. to one. This time we put up a six-burger in the third. Altuve and Springer both had home runs. It looked like Springer had a grand slam in this game, so I'm assuming that's why we had the six spot in the third. Mets get a solo shot from Jonathan Scope. And in game three, we do win as well, nine to four. So we do win the series, come back in this one. As it looks like we were leading, but built our lead in the ninth. As good offense for us in games two and three get us to victory. McCullers gets the win. Now, a lot more trades went down in this one, mostly prospects after we send this day. However, there was a more marquee trade between the Yankees and the Red. Nothing too blockbuster, but the Yankees do acquire Jesse Winker from the Cincinnati Reds. A nice outfield bat for them as they try to beef up their run for the postseason. Winker's having a great year in Cincinnati so far, 289 ERA. And the Yankees gave up a couple of prospects, starting pitcher Contreras and shortstop Jonathan Volpe, 19-year-old. Now for the second half of this episode, we will go to Boston to Fenway Park as we will see the Astros play the 61-37 Boston Red Sox. Two teams looking strong in their respective divisions as Marcus Walden will be taking them out for Boston. He's had a good season so far, 350 RA to 18 starts. He will be on the mound and he will start his day against Jose Altuve, now hitting 311, ninth in the AL in batting average. Start off his day 3 2 to Altuve, and he will get a slider, hits it deep to left field. However, he does get a little bit underneath this one for out number one. As that is Tyler O'Neill making the grab. More on him in a little bit. But our Astros lineup in this one Altuve, Brantley, Bregman, Alvarez, Bell, Canna in right, center field, George Springer, Carlos Correa hitting eighth at short, and then Garrett Stubbs behind the plate. So a lot of familiar faces for the Astros today. Michael Brantley up next, getting that platoon against righties. He swings at a high fastball, hits it to left his wheel, and O'Neill has out number two. That's going to bring up Jordan Alvarez. Oh, actually, excuse me, Bregman up first. 0-2 to Bregman. He gets a nice cutter, hits it deep to left field, and is off the glove of O'Neill and left against the wall. That will be ruled a double. That is not an error, but two outs with a base runner now for the Astros. Alvarez up next. He walks on the cutter. So maybe a little bit of a two-out rally here for Houston. Bell up next, 3-2. He walks as well. So just like that, Houston has bases loaded for Mark Canna. First pitch to Canna. He gets a cutter and drills it deep left field. Yes, that is a grand slam for Mark Canna. 19th home run of the season, 419. And just like that, the Astros this time are jumping out to an early lead. Canna. Stuns the crowd here in the first, tags all the bases. Let's take another look at this one. Just right off the bat, ripped to the green monster. And four runs just like that for Houston. Next up, George Springer 0-1 to him. And he gets a nice cutter as well and hits it to left field. Back-to-back -back jacks for Houston as Springer hits a solo shot. Home run number 12 on the season. 414 as he's really started to pick up his power numbers in the month of July. But this time, it's the Astros jumping out to a 5-0 lead here in Boston. Next up, Carlos Correa first pitch to Correa. It's not going to be a home run this time. He grounds to Bogarts as short, and one shortstop puts out the other. So, nice run support here for Francis Marte getting his second start of the season. He looked pretty good. Remember we watched him last episode. 
or in our last game we watched, 2.57 ERA, only gave up two runs in seven innings. He'll start his game against the ex-Marlin Jonathan Villar, and he will get a ground out to Bogart, or not Bogarts, Correa at short. Astros are now in the outfield. And we'll take a look at the Red Sox lineup, starting with VR. Then we'll see Bogarts, followed by J.D. Martinez, Rafael Devers, who's having a good season for Boston, Alex Verdugo at right, Travis Shaw at first, James McCann behind the plate, making his first start of the season, and the newly acquired Tyler O'Neill in left, coming over in the St. Louis Cardinals trade earlier in the month, and then Jose Peraza rounding out the order. Here's Bogarts with a one-out single into right, brings up J.D. Martinez, Full count to him. Blooper into center as the outfield was playing back. Martinez does have some power. And back-to-back -back singles for Boston. Has runners on the corners. One out. Here comes the powerful Rafael Devers. And he's not getting a home run, but he's going to get an RBI through the left side of the infield. So Boston does get one back here in the top of the first. Verdugo up next. 1-0, though. Will in the inning. 4-6-3 double play. And it's 5-1 Houston. Where we go top two now, Garrett Stubbs looking at a slider. Nice pitch by Walden to strike him out. Altuve up next. He's going to lay down the bunt on the first pitch, and it'll be right in front of McCann, but he can't get to it in time. That is a base hit for Altuve. Brantley up next hits this one deep to right field. Verdugo's trying to give chase, but it's up and over the wall for a ground rule double. So Astros with more offense here in the top of the second. Now Bregman is going to reach for a slider and pokes it through the infield. That's a two-run base hit for Bregman. And the Astros get that run back in more. Now 7-1 to one Houston. As that'll be it for Marcus Walden. He doesn't even last two innings. They're going to bring in a former Seattle Mariner, Kendall Graveman. Another player that Boston traded for earlier this month. We have familiarity against Graveman. He's not having the best of seasons. 547 ERA. Alvarez, though, cannot decide if he wants to hit the sinker. He strikes out looking for out number two. And then Bell up next. One, two to him. He grounds two Bogarts. That'll end at the top of the second. How about top three now? Starting off with the Grand Slam man, Canna. He's not going to hit a Grand Slam, but he's going to get another base hit. That one is hit up the middle for a single. And the Astros with another runner on base. Springer up next, 1-0 to him. He turns on a cutter, hits it deep left center, and this one's going to get off the wall in left center. Bounces over the head of the center fielder, and Springer's going to try for three. He's going to get it. An RBI triple for Springer. As Don't see those very often. That's actually triple number three on the season. And he's two for two with the two hardest base hits. Correa, though, will strike out looking on a cutter right down the middle. Looks like he got locked up there. That's going to bring up Stubbs, and on the very first pitch, he's going to hit this one deep left field. O'Neill will catch it. They will test his arm. Springer will come home, throw him his offline, and Springer has run number nine for Houston. 2 no for Altuve now, and the inning is not over. He's going to bloop this one in in front of the yard in center. And that's a two-out single. Brantley up next, though, 1-0. He will ground this one to the first baseman, so that'll end the inning. They throw seconds. That's the long out, but it's now 9-1. Houston, this one is now turning into a blowout. We have to see if Boston has any sort of answer. Bogarts will start us off, and he will walk. Martes with the curveball in the dirt puts him on base. Martinez up next, 1-0, and this one's past the diving bell into right field up against the corner, and Bogarts will head to third base. J.D. Martinez with a double. So that will now bring up Rafael Devers. 1-2 to Devers. And he lines this one into right field. And it's going to get up against the wall. Thankfully that wasn't a homer. But Devers will have a two RBI out double. So Boston trying to chip into this lead. Is now down 9-3. to three. Devers 17th double of the season. Verdugo up next. He's going to single into left field. So another base hit for Boston. Now runners on the corner, still nobody out. So Martes needs to settle down a little bit as Travis Shaw will poke this one through the infield right side. And it's 9-4 now, Houston. So Boston, don't count them out yet. James McCann up next. He looks at a beautiful pitch to crush, but that's a strike three second of the day for Martes. Tyler O'Neill now, 1-0. He's not going to let this one get by. Hit deep toe left center off the top of the wall, the 379 sign. One run comes around, 9-5 Houston. Still only one out 
Jose Peraza up next. He pops up into foul territory. Bell will have out number two. And I'll send us to the top of the order. Jonathan VR up next. He's going to hit this one to left field. He gets down in front of Brantley. Eats him up. One run comes around, and another one comes as well. 9-7 Houston. Boston only down by two. That will finally be the plug for Martes. Jose Urania has to come in early again to stop this bleeding. This time, Alisi inherits a lead. He's got his ERA down to 531. Two outs caught by Altuve. So Boston with a six spot here in the bottom of the third. Let's stay with Boston, see if they can continue this rally. Martinez, however, cannot. He strikes out on the slider. Nice pitch by Urania. Devers up next, 0-1. Lines it into left center, beats the shift in front of Brantley. So a one-out base hit for Boston. Brings up Verdugo, 2-0 to him. He lines this one into right center. This time, nobody can cut this one off. Devers at first round second. He's going to third. He's going to come home. They're going to try to throw it at the plate, but it's not going to be in time. Now it's only a one-run lead for Houston. Travis Shaw up next. 1-1. One, one. Hits it deep center. It's going to be off the top of the wall, but the next run will score, and believe it or not, Boston has tied this ball game up in the bottom of the fourth. Not only that, but they're threatening to take the lead. McCann with a single into right. They're going to test the arm of Canna. Throw at the plate. It's online, and it is safe. How is that safe? Boston now takes the lead 10-9 in the bottom of the fourth. Springer does get out number two, but cannot believe Houston has blown a 9-1 lead here, and it's only been two innings, not even two innings. Thankfully, that's going to be it for Boston here in the bottom of the fourth as they now lead 10-9. So what a turn of events here in Boston. We're just going to stay with them. Bottom five, they're not done. Base hit to left field. Lead off double for the Red Sox. How many hits can they pile up? Xander Bogart's up next. 1-0. He's going to hit into right field. That's going to get past Canna up against the wall. Another run here for the Red Sox. That is run 11. And we're still only in the top, bottom of the fifth. Still nobody out. That does it for Urania. Chris Devinsky now comes in. A better reliever out of the pen for us this season. 2-1 gets a chopper to Correa, who will put out the first out. Sorry for that ding of my phone. Forgot to mute it. Endeavors up next, 0-1. He lines to Altuve. It will advance the base runner, but that is out number two. Now Verdugo up next. Need to get out of this inning, and they can't do it. Bloop into right. Base hit, RBI single, 12-9. They're actually going to test the arm. Verdugo's going to get into second, and he's somehow safe as well. I don't know if we're not implying the tags or what, but... It's now 12-9 Boston, however, that will not be any more runs as we are now down by three. So after being up eight just three innings ago, we're now down by three. But there's a leadoff base hit in the top of the six for Altuve. That's going to bring up Brantley, 1-0, grounder. Peraza fields it, throws him out at first, but Altuve does advance to second. No double play attempt. Bregman up next, 1-2. He gets this one and hits it into shallow center. They're playing back. That's going to get down. Altuve, though, will stay at third. So runners on the corners now. One out for Jordan Alvarez. 0-1. Lined into the right center gap. That's going to be a base hit. Bregman will round second, come to third. That's an RBI for Alvarez. Cuts the lead to two. That also do it for Graveman. And in comes Trevor Hildenberg. He has a 501 ERA. It's not the best season for him. He's going to start off against Bell. He's going to hit it deep to right. Rodrigo will record the outs, but that'll be another run for Houston. It's now a 12 to 11 ball game. Canna up next. First pitch swing and hit up the middle. Another base hit for Canna. That eats up VR in center. Alvarez is actually going to get on his horse and try to steal an extra bag, and he gets it. So he advances to third. Runners on the corners. George Springer's two for three on the day. Cannot get another hit. And the Astros stayed down by one. And we're going to fast forward in this one to the top of the ninth. One more chance for Houston. Brandon Workman, though, is come to close us out 20 for 20 on saves. Josh Bell will lead us up in the top of the ninth. And he gets a fastball and drills it to right. Off the foul pull. That one is gone. In a hurry. And just like that, it's a tie ball game. Josh Bell, solo shot. Workman's first blown save of the season. And it's gone in a flash. 
28th home run for Bell ties us up at 12, and we're back to square one here in the top of the ninth. Who would have known with 24 runs, we would still be tied? Canada does strike out. Next up is Springer. He's first pitch swing and hits it deep to left center. That one's going to be off the wall. Springer will turn to second and have a double. So he has a single side of the cycle. That's going to bring up Carlos Correa. Full count to him. He strikes out on the inside fastball for out number two. So big strikeout for Workman. That brings up Stubbs 3-2, and he draws the walk. That is a close pitch to say the least. And he will take first base. Altuve next will line into right field. They're going to send Springer home, testing the arm of Verdugo. It is in time, but it cannot be corralled by McCann. Gutsy base running for Houston. Nets them the lead. It's 13-12 to for the Astros. What a base hit for Altuve. What a run or a base running call by Houston. Going aggressive. Garcia, though, will strike out. So it will be a one-run lead for Houston. Going into the bottom of the ninth, and it is Brad Hand in to close us out. Can we go an inning with no runs? O'Neill, first pitch, grounds to Correa, easy out number one. How about Jose Peraza, 8-9, 1 for Boston, and Peraza will line into center field. The way this ball game's been going, you know this one wasn't going to be easy. Now that takes us to the top of the order. Jonathan VR, 2-2, two, two, can't catch up to the fastball, strike three. One more outs in this ballgame. Xander Bogart's up next, 3-2. He grounds to Bregman, who pump fakes for some reason, goes to first, gets him out. That was an interesting way to end the ballgame, but Houston nets the victory. Final score, 13-12. 25 runs between these two teams. These are two hitting juggernauts, but you expect a little bit of pitching here. Here is your final line score. 13 runs on 18 hits for Houston, 12 for 20 for Boston. Peacock ends up getting the win in this one in a wild game. Springer is your player of the game. 3 for 5 was that single shy of the cycle. He just needed the easiest one. But we get the win in the first of four games here at Fenway Park. And we are going to send Martes down after that one. Josh James is healthy, and that's an easy call to make. We're also going to try to fix our bullpen issues. We're going to try to start in-house before we look to the trade block. Andres Munoz is one of the guys we acquired in the offseason when we flipped Lorenzo Cain to the Padres. So we're going to give him a shot. He's played pretty good in AAA. We'll see if he can be a temporary fix. In order to make that roster spot, we're actually going to send down Joe Smith. Some of y'all might think that's a little odd, but he has regressed a lot this season. And his ERA has really jumped up, so... He has to pass through waivers, but we are going to send Smith down to AAA. Now, the Red Sox, they win game two despite having more runs than hits. They have four to runs on three hits, but they win four to two. Another trade in the major leagues. Diamondbacks acquire Jorge Soler for Kansas City. Please keep sending more players to the National League. Soler is a nice bat iron man for Arizona. Hasn't had a good season in Kansas City, so maybe a change of scenery to Arizona will do him wonders. And the main piece in this trade is Seth Beer, the first base prospect, goes to Kansas City. They also acquire a couple of pitchers who, you know, aren't really going to do a whole lot, you would think. Just kind of filling out the trade market. As Seth Beer is the, you know, prize prospect in this deal. Jimmy Nelson is just another right-handed pitcher who hasn't been good for a couple of years. Also, another transaction, it wasn't a trade, but Albert Pujols has been sent on waivers, so unfortunately his career is going to end more than likely in Triple A. Game 3, we do lose to Boston as well, 7-2, so that's two straight losses, three home runs for the Red Sox. It was Josh James with another rough outing. Tell me if you haven't heard that one before. Game four, though, we do win 7-5 to five, thanks to a five spot in the second. Bregman had our only home run in this one. And this time, it was pretty decent pitching by Verlander. And we got two Jamison tie-on in this one. So we split the series against Boston. Next time, we have a three-game series on the road to Seattle before finally coming home for a three-game series against Tampa Bay. We will see Rogelio Armenteros on the mound for Houston to start off the episode. But... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Lots of fireworks here as we start to wind down the season. Hopefully we can make the playoffs and go out in our last season 
of the series strong. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. This is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.